Hey, evening everybody, as this is a recap to the Phillies somehow 5-4 to four loss to the Mets. This is a game they have zero, zero business losing. Can't go as much on a huge rant as Ricky Bo go on because people are sleeping right now, but the team definitely makes me want to do so. They are really just been a disgrace. Um, always have found out ways to lose, and I mean... Not going to go beyond Ricky Bow level, but I definitely can get there, as he said. And as Nick Wright always says, the hell is wrong with you, man? And that's directed at Hector Nearest. The dude had one good outing and then can't figure out how to even keep a ball in his hand. Uh, he would probably be off the team, honestly, or at least if there was a regular season, as he has been earlier, if this season was regular in his career, sent back down to fix his quirks, because he's been atrocious this year other than a couple of outings. Absolutely awful. So, as Michael Barkhan said, I would have DFA'd him by a knee-jerk reaction because of how awful he's been this year. And the, maybe the Phillies, honestly, if they actually were worth uh, anything when it came to evaluating pitching, Mac Glentak was uh, able, able to actually be good at that. They would have had the luxury of doing so because they would have actually had, like all the good teams in baseball, good depth when it comes to pitching. But since they can't evaluate pitching worth a lick, they don't have that. And that also hurts Girardi because, no, I do agree with everybody. No chance Wheeler should have been removed. That 95 pitch, you should have let him try to keep going. Our bullpen is abysmal. There's no reason to ever remove somebody. And then you got lucky because they pinched it. Alonzo, who's struggling this year, but still going against a Morgan, which is a good matchup for him. And Morgan was able to get that out and then somehow look bad facing Michael Conforto. So this year just hasn't really added up. Uh, the Phillies are the opposite of a good, efficient baseball team, honestly, and it's sad and hard for me to say that, but it's true. They're the opposite of a good, efficient baseball team. At the start of this game, it looked like, like Kruk was saying, they were playing good NL, old-school NL baseball. They were finding ways to get guys over and get guys in. Uh, Knapp, of course, doubled, uh, which scored Gene Segura and um, advanced him to third on a throwing over to second base. And then later on, Hazy got out on a sack fly to score Andrew Knapp, who was over at third base and hit it the opposite way, to McNeil, who does not have a good throwing on from the outfield in order to get it in. So again, small ball. Then McCutcheon reached on a fielder's choice, and uh, Kingery scored. So again, small ball. And then Gene Segura got a homer that just about scratched over. He had a very good game. I'll give credit where credit's due. I usually get on him a little bit much, but uh, he had a very good game, hit a homer, made a great fielding play. But it doesn't matter because uh, the Phillies still couldn't pick up Zach Wheeler, who, like Ricky Metallico said, threw seven and a third innings with a purple finger. If you can't pick up your starter after he goes out there and looks like that with a messed up finger on his hand, which obviously you know as a pitcher you need to grip that and have the feel in those things, preferably like Girardi was getting at in post game to have a hundred percent of your pitches to have the full strength of your pitches he definitely like Girardi said wasn't a hundred percent and his pitches weren't a hundred percent because it, that's just not the case that's not natural that would be unnatural for a human to have his pitches be a hundred percent with a purple messed up finger but he still went out there and pitched like a beast he is and has been destroying it all year this year and continue to do that today but the team couldn't pick him up as Ricky Batalico said fortunate to say this but the Mets deserve to win this game and the Phillies deserve to lose this game the Mets picked up Jacob deGrom he went out with a hamstring uh issue after the second inning and they picked up their ace the guy that's the best pitcher in baseball that the Phillies were able to figure out ways to score on and early and then just fell and couldn't do anything it's like they just went under Patrick Starr's rock and forgot how to play baseball so the the team needs to figure it out you can't be winning a game and then looking abysmal in terms of being able to close out games yet again just the next game if you want to get anywhere in the postseason which I don't think is very likely unfortunately and if you want to even get to the postseason which could become less and less likely if you keep having these blunders and figuring out ways to lose rather than vice versa, ways to win, then you might not even see the postseason. Because it's not like the Phillies are in a pretty postseason spot. They're just in the postseason. So keep going the way you're going, and you might not even see the postseason anyway. 
And that's something that would be disgraceful for the spot they were in, especially after going on the winning streak they went on, and then went on almost as bad of a losing skid. That's just inexcusable. Clearly, Gabe Kapler was not the issue. It's clearly upper management from Middleton to Glenn Tech. Uh, they can't evaluate a full roster. They can't put a full roster because they only put bits and pieces of a roster together and can't finish out the entire puzzle. It's like if you had a thousand wood puzzles and put 800 pieces together. That's John Middleton and Matt Glenn Tech. So, th- this team has holes. And Wheeler and Noah have been the guys that have been stopgapping it. Wheeler should have been able to stopgap it. Hopefully tomorrow, the Phillies will be able to pick up Aaron Nola when Wheeler is usually the guy more than not, except for Nola's last start, that gets picked up in terms of run scoring and in general by a team. Well, that wasn't even the case tonight. So, uh, like they kind of said on postgame, I mean, I don't know where to go with the, talking about this team anymore. There's not a lot of uh, positives to very much say other than the fact that Wheeler keeps owning it. Adam Hazley had another sack fly. Should have caught that ball in right field, though. I'm a huge fan of Hazley, but I will also say when something should happen, I will say, just like you give credit where credit's due, you also give kind of discredit where discredit is due, and he should have caught that fly ball. You have to go back an extra half step. You're supposed to be a guy when you read his scouting all that that becomes and develops into a better and better fielder. And we saw that in the minors and for some reason he hasn't translated that fully yet to the majors except for um when he's in center he looks a tad bit uh better. So hopefully that comes along with his hitting and I'm a huge fan of Hazley, but you have to give this credit where credit's due just like you give credit where credit's due. Um so I would say tomorrow, the Phillies, of course, like I said, you have to win two out of three in this series to get some momentum going into playing Toronto. And you just you just have to uh, figure out a way. I mean, the Phillies have to have that mentality again. When there's a will, there's a way. They haven't had that with this team in general. Or the next man up, which they have when we are on our other runs in the past. This team has had has to figure it out. Uh, you can't even pick up a pitcher that pitched great that had a messed up finger and still pitched great. And also, we must point out, though we still need to bounce back from a call like that, but like they said in postgame, that was a monstrosity of a call. That umpire must have been watching a game in a parallel universe because Conforto clearly swung by about at least a half foot, if not a full foot, on that check swing. So again, disgraceful umping. But that didn't, the Phillies were blowing the game in general at, at that point. Um, that that just allowed them to get that tying run, unfortunately. But with how our bullpen is, what says to say that they wouldn't have blown it anyway? There's probably honestly a 90% chance they would have still blew it with how abysmal this bullpen is. So the Phillies need to get it going. They need to get a streak going again. Otherwise... If even if you make the postseason, you're going to be going up against a team. Yeah, anything can happen in a three game series, like they said in the post game, especially in the in the past weeks, especially when you have Wheeler and Nola. But not if you don't pick up your guys anyway. It doesn't make a difference how good they pitch if you have games like this that you figure out ways to lose. Because it's a heck of a lot easier to figure out ways to lose against the elite teams in the league rather than the New York Mets. So. The Phillies need to figure this out before the season ends. They also need to figure it out before they bury themselves out of a playoff spot uh, because you're not sitting pretty in the playoffs. You're just in the playoffs right now. If you go on a losing skid, pretty soon you ain't going to be in them. So the Phillies better get their themselves going here and get on a roll and start ringing the bell because they have not looked good for a continuous period of time now. They had one good game yesterday in the middle there and other than that have been abysmal again and a disgrace so hopefully the Phillies are able to turn it around win tomorrow with Nola get two out of three and get going everybody have a great safe and pleasant night and if you watch this tomorrow have a great safe and pleasant Thursday Uh, peace out everybody and have a good night and hopefully our Phillies can rebound tomorrow at 705 with Aaron Nola against Seth Lugo and get to Lugo a little bit who's been really good as Nola dominates again hopefully so peace out, everybody. Phillies, you got to start ringing that bell and putting some consistent wins together. Let's go. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, everyone.